Hello, I'm Cynthia Brazelton. Welcome to Victory Today. Last week on the broadcast, we were talking about the weight of your words. This week, we'll continue talking about the weight of your words. Not only the weight of your words, but we've discovered that the weight of other people's words in our lives weigh heavily on our lives. The, God gave it to me like this. It's something like secondhand smoke. There are more people that are being destroyed because of secondhand smoke, being around other people that smoke. Do you know that your words and other people's words around your life can destroy your life as well? And so not only do we have to be careful about what we say, you have to be careful about what other people are saying around you. You don't want to be a party to any negative words that are coming out and that you receive those words. You've got to let those things go. But we're going to talk about that more in today's broadcast. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss what I have to say. It is through your word that you release faith. It's not quit holding your fist real twice. It's not squinching your eyes. It's not squeezing your body and just saying, God. <laughs> it really isn't in that. It's in your word. It is not even how loud you say it. It's not even how quiet you say it. It's in the fact that you believe what you say. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I've seen the most powerful moves of the Spirit of God in my life when I just said something under my breath and said, devil, in the name of Jesus, you better shut your mouth. My lips hardly moved. But words are spirit. Yes. And guess what the devil did? Shut his mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so it wasn't like... Everybody around me heard it, though disciples did hear Jesus say it. I don't, you know, doesn't say how loud or soft he spoke. It's just a matter of you having faith in what you're saying. You know, sometimes say we shout real loud that, you know, things will move. Uh, but if you don't have any belief in it, nothing's moving. And so it's not in the loudness or the, the expressions of your body language that will determine whether you're going to have what you say, but more so than you just believing what you're saying and believing what? That God's given me authority through words, power and dominion through words, and things respond to words. So when I speak, I expect a response. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? And so he said, have faith in God, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he say come to pass, he's going to have whatsoever he saith. How important is saying is so important to hear. He said, if whosoever shall say, say what? Whatsoever. He's going to have whatsoever he says. So you've got to believe what you say, but understand there's power in what you say. Somebody say, there's power in my words. Say, there's authority in my words. And Jesus goes on to exercise that power, and he says, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, how do you pray? You've got to say. When you pray, believe you receive them, and you're going to have them. Just like I did the fig tree, you can do anything. And Matthew, he said it this way to them, because they were just, you know, they were amazed at what happened when he spoke to the fig tree. He said, you can talk to a tree, and you can talk to this mountain. Now, he pointed to a literal mountain. It doesn't matter if it's a tree, doesn't matter if it's a mountain, as long as you just believe what you say. Amen. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter if it's a headache, doesn't matter if it's cancer. You can curse cancer at the root, and it'll dry up. Hallelujah. Why? It's a creative thing by the enemy through disease. You speak to disease and it will dry up and it will wither away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? It doesn't have more authority on those that God gave authority to. Sickness and disease doesn't have that kind of authority over to you. It does when you don't say anything and it does when you receive it. All you got to do is say, I don't receive that. And I command cancer to die. I curse it at the very root. Hallelujah. 
And every atom, every proton, electron, and neutron, or whatever it is that's causing those cancer cells to multiply will now begin to die as a result of what you say. And every good cell in your body will come back together and fight off every cell that's not a, the will of God for your life. And next thing you know, you're walking in divine health because of what you said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's how powerful our words are. You have to look at what Jesus has shown us and illustrated us, not through just this illustration, but so many illustrations. Even in uh, Mark chapter 4, uh, in the book of Mark, and he's, you know, the story, they're in this big storm, and Jesus in the hinder part of the slip, sleep, y'all know that story, and they wake him up, says, don't you even care that we're perishing? Look what they're saying out of their mouth. They saw a great storm of wind, and their conclusion from the great storm is that we will perish. Storms arise in your life. Here's the conclusion. I'm going to perish. We're just not going to make it. This marriage is not going to make it. It's too much that's going on. I've tried. It's just not going to work for us. Jesus, don't you care that we perish? Jesus got up and rebuked the storm. He rebuked the wind and the rain. And the Bible said, he said, peace. Be still, and there was a great calm. Can you see how, calm? Can you see how he charged the atmosphere that was chaotic, and now it's a calm because of what he said? It may be chaotic in your life. It may be chaos around you. There may be storms brewing in your life, but you have the ability to speak out of your mouth a peace that will change the very atmosphere of where you are and what's going on in your life simply by what you say. All Jesus said was, peace, be still. And to his amazement, why are you so fearful and how is it that you don't have any faith? Have faith in God. You have, what faith is that, Jesus? I don't know if I can move a storm. No, have what faith in what you say. Have the God kind of faith, the ability to speak words and to see what you say come to pass. You set the atmosphere. Peace be still. Some of you are afraid to go home because of the things that are happening in your life. Set the atmosphere before you get there. Devil, I evict you out of my house. There'll be no arguing tonight. There'll be no bickering tonight. There'll be another fight in this house. I command peace be still. You'll walk in your house and you won't think you thought somebody else moved in. And somebody else did. Peace walked in. Hallelujah. And you evict the devil out. Hallelujah. And so he's given us this awesome illustration of the power of our words, the ability to speak and to see what we say come to pass, given that authority that God has given us. And if you and I would just simply use this authority, agreeing with the word of God, you <laughs> with me to Mark, Matthew 18. This is good. This is good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Somebody said, I'm wealthy. Hallelujah. I just thought I'd change your atmosphere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is, I'm, I can't, this is so powerful. You know, some, here's another issue that we have when we say things. We say things in our mouth, and yes, we believe, or I should say we're hoping and believing <laughs> that what we say will take place, and then we focus all of our attention on trying to figure out how it's going to happen. <laughs> and really, your focus is on how, too, because there's a level of doubt, But remember, we talked about doubting your doubts. He says, listen, if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things what he says come to pass, you're going to have whatsoever you say. And so you can't doubt 
And so you can't think about how God's going to do this thing because you limit yourself from receiving when you try to figure out how he's going to do it. I mean, I can declare I'm blessed. I'm wealthy. Wealth and riches, that's the word of God. Psalm 112 says, wealth and riches shall be in my house. Now, it would be wrong for me to try to figure out who's going to give me some wealth. Did God speak to you about blessing me tonight? I wonder who's going to put some money in my hand tonight. And you leave and nobody did. Maybe wealth and riches ain't in my house. And you really discount God through that place of doubt of how God could bless you I mean, you could be walking down the street and a $100 bill can blow in front of you. Are you hearing me? This is just like, I mean, that's just so minor. There's so many ways that God has already set up to bless you. But here's the most important part. He said he's given you power, Deuteronomy 8, 18. He's given you power to get well that he may establish his covenant that he swore unto our fathers as it is this day. So he's given you power. Here's this power. Here's this authority that God has given you to declare it. Nothing starts without a word. Everything is because somebody said something. Remember I told you this person has the ability to make a plane or put satellite in the sky because they said something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything is created by a word. Hallelujah. And so most, I would say not most, but all inventions, all creative things are, be, are a result of words. God created everything with words and everything will respond to word. And so you think about all those witty inventions that are on the inside of you now. You're trying to figure out how they're going to happen. Say it. Amen. This doohickey is going to do this. Are you hearing? I don't know what your doohickey is. This thing going to do this thing. And everybody going to want this thing. Because everybody need this thing to do that thing for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. When we bought this Kmart, and Pastor Tony had a vision of what it looks like that you see right now, taking this vision and artic- articulating it to the architects, who looked in this building and said, what you see cannot be done. He said, if I can see it, it can be done. And this is what it's going to look like. And he began to tell them what it looked like. And as a result of that, you're sitting in what he said it would look like. Because somebody said something. Now, if he'd have gone along along with them and said, you know, well, if you can't do that, then we just won't have it. Now, where would we be sitting? Are you hearing me? And so it's the power of your words that will transform things into things that you say. And it's literally the agreeing with the word and agreeing with God and and speaking words that God has said. I believe if God puts something in your heart and it comes out of your mouth, ain't no stopping it. You hear me? There's no stopping it. The only way it will be stopped if you say something differently. You can't put seed in the ground and then kick the dirt, uh, dig the dirt back up. Hallelujah. Do you want to be a part of God's winning team? It's time to revamp your playbook with strategies found in His Word. In this series, Tony Brazelton explains how executing the Word of God alongside godly character, causes an unseen God to supernaturally invade the affairs of man in this world. Start your strategy today and reach your goals with signs following. Here's the power that is released when you agree with God. When you agree. How do I agree with God? Say what he said. Matthew 18. 18. For verily I say unto you that whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever has already been declared lawful or unlawful in heaven, you can declare it lawful or unlawful here on the earth. What has already been declared? Because God's already provided. He's already done it. It's already the seed of all of his creation. It's already in it to produce and reproduce. If you would agree with God is already placed within it, you will receive the production of it. 
So that's all you have to do. He said, if you agree, verse 19, again, I say unto you, and there are a lot of times in your life, just like Jesus talking to you, again, I say, sometimes you, how many ever talked to your children and had to say it again? Because they didn't give the right response when you said it the first time. And you say stuff like, didn't I tell you? And again, I say. And you're saying, again, I say, and didn't I tell you, till you get the response of what you said. So if you don't see the response of what you said, again, I said. How they, and, and I told you. And didn't I tell you? Are you... <laughs> I mean, that leg is still hurting. Didn't I tell you that you will function in the perfection that God created you to function? And I command you to move now in the name of Jesus. Every bone, every tissue, every ligament, every cell, every part of this leg, you function properly now in the name of Jesus. Get up. You're not sitting down. Are you here? Didn't I tell <laughs> And again, I say... Hallelujah. So he said, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall t agree on earth as touching how many things? Anything. What does anything mean? Anything. No, come on, for real now. What does anything mean? No, seriously, what is, does he really mean anything? Come on, to the religious mind, does he really mean any, did God really mean anything? He really did not mean anything. He was really talking about, <laughs> he said, if you, two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall, it shall, not maybe, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So here's a power of agreement. Husband, wife, why spend all your married life disagreeing? When there's so much power in your agreeing, to see what God has said for you and your family, your prosperity, your health, your wealth that awaits you, and you have focused the first three, five years of your marriage trying to win an argument by disagreeing with everything that has to be said for the sake of argument, and there's no power being released in your family because all you do is disagree, and you think it's cute that you win an argument. You may have won the argument, but there's no power release because though they're not talking anymore, they're not in agreement with you. And you got, instead of you using your words to produce in the house home, the devil has shut your mouth because you said, I ain't saying nothing. But he said, if two of you just come together and touch and agree on anything, Honey, that sounds like a really dumb idea, but if you believe that's the will of God, then I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that dumb idea is going to make us a millionaire. Because <laughs> if they can take a dumb rock and sell it and make millions, then I don't care what it is that you say, I'm just going to agree. Because <laughs> if they can paint a, a smiley face on a sponge and make a million billions of dollars, that dumb idea of yours don't sound so dumb right now. I just agree. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do it, baby, but that's not up to me. If you say we're going to do that, that's where we're going to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, here's touching and agree. You thought, obviously, it's not a physical touch that's necessary, but we've got to be touched. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Amen. That I have to have your heart. We have to have the same heart, same mind concerning what we're agreeing to so that our words in perfect alignment can produce what we say. Because when your words are in perfect alignment 
in agreement, not only with each other, but in perfect alignment with what God has to say about it. There is the manifestation of what God has declared and what God has said. And most of us, we miss out on this powerful truth of the power of agreement and that we're not seeing a lot of things manifest because we simply don't agree. We don't have the heart of those that we're agreeing with. And so you have to have the heart. You have to see eye to eye. You have to think alike. You have to carry the same weight that somebody. When there's perfect alignment, listen, when there's perfect alignment, there is unstoppable. Unstoppable. You touch and agree on anything. It shall be, not maybe, it shall be done of my father. What would happen if you and your spouse or you touch and agree with somebody else over the welfare of your child? Where would they be? Perfect alignment. I don't know about him. We've been trying to help him for the longest time. He still, she still ain't. Yeah, there's no alignment. One is saying one thing and the other is saying something else. One is believing one thing and one's, there's no hope for them. <laughs> Not realizing it was hope for you. There's hope for them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if we just get in perfect alignment, are y'all hearing me? Concerning God's will for their lives. Why? He said, have faith in God or have the same kind of faith as God. The power of your words. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says that, you know, we having the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore we speak. We believe. So if we and if you and I believe alike, you know, how you can be two Christians and how many know they can believe two different things? And just because we're Christians doesn't mean we have the same beliefs. And because, and because we're two Christians doesn't mean that, you know, if I say I agree or um, I add my agreement to yours, but if my heart's not where your heart is, how I many you know there's no power released in that? That's why we don't be with somebody unequally yoked with somebody that believes something differently. Because you want to link up with somebody that will be in agreement with, and I'm talking about from a positive point of view, but how I many know, not only from a positive point of view, if you link up with somebody that's just as negative as you are, you're going to see the manifestation of it. Yep. There's no question about it. Yep. Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. You know. They agree together. Let's lie. Say we got this amount of money because we're going to keep back some of the money we got. He goes in before her, his wife. And they said, they laid the money at the apostles' feet. We got this much money. Holy Ghost said, Peter, they got more money than that. So Peter said, how much money did you really get? That's the money we got. He said, now what in the world? Why are you going to lie to the Holy Ghost? Come on, man. You can lie to me, but don't lie to the Holy Ghost. And immediately, you know the story. Maybe y'all don't. I don't have time to read it to you. He fell over dead. And they picked up his body and they went and buried him. His wife came in after him. And Peter said, hey, how much money did you get for the selling of the land? We got $5.50. You ain't get seven fifty. No, we got $5.50. <laughs> we got $5.50. Are you sure you ain't get seven fifty? No. My husband and I, we got $5.50. The same people that buried your husband is waiting for, bury my husband. She fell over dead, too, just in case y'all didn't know what happened. <laughs> you can imagine. Barry, my, huh? I'm coming for you, y'all. No, just. <laughs> she fell over, too. Because they agreed together. And it was a manifestation. And so you, the power of agreement, we're just, I, I don't want you to um, dwell on the negative part of that. And it's so important that you, husband and wife, if there's one that's negative, don't you get in agreement with that. Amen. Push toward what you desire from them. I mean, your spouse may say, honey, I don't feel good today. My head is killing me. 
Don't you say, oh, you poor thing. Why don't you just lay down? <laughs> you don't say that. They might not get up. Because you can't say my head is killing me and expect that, that not put a seed on the inside of you that will eventually seed time over, will produce a harvest in your life. So you can't tell your honey, just lay down. Why don't you just take it easy? It's like your head is not killing you. Your head will not kill you. We take authority over the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. He cannot stay in this house. I decree and declare the blood of Jesus over your head. It's by your, his stripes you are healed. And I can say, oh, yes, amen. Even in the midst of my head hurting, I'm not going to determine what, what happened to me as a result of what I feel, but what is a result of what I say. And I've got to say what God has said about the circumstances to see what, that's the only way you're going to see what God has said. Amen. Stop saying, oh, my feet are killing me. <laughs> you are opening the door of death. Oh, I'm telling you, it's just my, uh, my eyes are burning me. I'm saying I'm burning me up. <laughs> my, what in the world? You don't ever want to be caught in the fire. The words you speak are important and have power. If those words are any negative words, such as gossiping, complaining, or backbiting, they will set atmospheres of destruction, defeat, and failure. If those words are God's words, they will set atmospheres of grace, peace, and blessing. As a born-again believer created in the image and likeness of God, you have the ability to set the atmosphere around you through the words you speak. In this series, The Weight of Your Words, Cynthia Brazelton explains how to choose life and blessings in every area of your life. Choose life today by applying these biblical principles into your daily words. Next week on Victory Today. All things are possible to him who can believe. You are born to give birth to something that is impossible. Every one of us are unique. No one of us has the same fingerprint. God does not create the same thing. No star has the same fingerprint. Everything is different because God has created all of us to have an expression of something that is impossible. There are things that you were born for that other people were not. There is a fight you were created for that other people can't win. Join us again for Victory Today with Tony and Cynthia Brazelton. And remember 1 John 4, 17, as Jesus is, so are we in this world.